What is consciousness? For a conscious creature, there is something that it is like to be that creature. There is something it is like to be me, something it is like to be you, and probably something it is like to be a sheep or a dolphin. For each of these creatures, subjective experiences are happening. It feels like something to be me. But there is almost certainly nothing it is like to be a bacterium, a blade of grass, or a toy robot. For these things, there is, presumably, never any subjective experience going on. No inner universe, no awareness, no consciousness. This way of putting things is most closely associated with the philosopher Thomas Nagel, who in 1974 published a now legendary article called What Is It Like to Be a Bat? in which he argued that while we humans could never experience the experiences of a bat, there nonetheless would be something it is like for the bat to be a bat. This paper is one of the most influential in all philosophy of mind. According to Nagel, an organism has conscious mental states if and only if there is something it is like to be that organism, something it is like for the organism. I've always favoured Nagel's approach because it emphasises phenomenology, the subjective properties of conscious experience, such as why a visual experience has the form, structure and qualities that it does as compared to the subjective properties of an emotional experience or of an olfactory experience. These properties are sometimes also called qualia in philosophy. The redness of red, the pang of jealousy, the sharp pain or dull throb of a toothache. For an organism to be conscious, it has to have some kind of phenomenology for itself. Any kind of experience, any phenomenological property, counts as much as any other. Wherever there is experience, there is phenomenology, and wherever there is phenomenology, there is consciousness. A creature that comes into being only for a moment will be conscious just as long as there is something it is like to be it, even if all that's happening is a fleeting feeling of pain or pleasure. We can usefully distinguish the phenomenological properties of consciousness from its functional and behavioural properties. These refer to the roles that consciousness may play in the operations of our minds and brains, and to the behaviours an organism is capable of by virtue of having conscious experiences. Although the functions and behaviours associated with consciousness are important topics, they are not the best places to look for definitions. Consciousness is first and foremost about subjective experience. It is about phenomenology. This may seem obvious, but it wasn't always so. At various times in the past, being conscious has been confused with having language, being intelligent, or exhibiting behaviour of a particular kind. But consciousness does not depend on outward behaviour, as is clear during dreaming and for people suffering states of total bodily paralysis. To hold that language is needed for consciousness would be to say that babies, adults who have lost language abilities, and most, if not all, non-human animals lack consciousness. And complex abstract thinking is just one small part, though possibly a distinctively human part, of being conscious.